Hi there, welcome to the seventh video of making a game like Among Us. And in this video, we're gonna add a time up with collider objects and also other objects that are not gonna be inside a time up. One big thing that we're gonna take a look at is also image sorting. If you missed any of the previous videos, there's links in description for the playlist so you can check those out. And with that, let's get started. I'm gonna add some more images. So I'll just start with just these two right here and we'll follow the same process as we did in the previous video. So change it from single to multiple, set it to 128, click apply. And now we can go to the sprite editor, how to slice it. But one thing that I wanna do here is move the pivot point. As you can see, the placement on the grid is gonna be right here at the bottom. So I want the pivot to be in the middle of this grid place. So let's switch from center to custom, I like to work in pixels. So let's set it to 30. Maybe we'll have to change it, click apply. Go to the other one and let's do the same thing. So slice, apply, and I also need to move that center pivot. And for this one, I think it is 33. We can close that now and let's open up our tile palette and add both of these in. So we'll add them here. So here we have two new tiles that we can use. I can place them in this tile map that I have, but I want to add collisions on these tiles and I don't want all the tiles in this tile map to be also a collision shape. So for that, I'll add another tile map. So under the grid, I'll go to 2D isometric tile map. That creates a second tile map. Let's rename it to objects. And in this tile map, we can place these structures. So just place some here, select the other one and some like that. Now, if you want to add collision shapes to these objects, you can go to the inspector and add a tile map collider. So I have a tile map collider right here and that creates a collision shape. But you can see that the collision shapes are actually trying to follow the sprite. If that's not what you're looking for, you can go to the tile map folder and select a tile that you want to change the collision. And in our case, we don't want to use the sprite but we actually want to use the grid. So right here we have a collider type, select grid, and also here collider type, and we'll select the grid. We could have placed all the objects in the same tile map, and for the ones that we didn't want colliders, we could have selected none, but there's one more thing that does not allow us to do that, and it's the sprite sorting. So what I'm talking about is this right here. If we select our character, our sprite renderer is currently rendering on the default layer, and the order layer is zero. Our first tile map that we created is also on the sorting layer default and order layer zero. But for this one, we actually want to move it back because that's the background tile map. So that's pretty simple to solve that. Just move it back by negative one. But we have a problem with these objects. And the problem is with the sorting order. So what I'm talking about is this. So if I place a sprite right now in here, let's actually place two sprites. And I click play. If my player is walking in front of the object, that looks right, it's over that object, but as soon as my player goes behind the object, the player is still on top of that object. And that's not what we're looking for. So to fix that, what we can do is go to the project settings and under graphics, we have transparency sort mode. So currently it's set to default and transparency sort axis is on Z. I want to change the Z axis to Y and switch to custom axis. Now what this is gonna do, is render everything with the highest Y value first and the smallest Y value last. And that works perfectly for us because whenever our player is in front, that means he's gonna have a smaller Y value. And whenever he's behind an object, that means he's gonna have a greater Y value. So let's check, make sure that's actually working how we expect. And there we go. Now, whenever the player is in front of the object, it's fine. And whenever the player is in the back of the object, he's actually behind the object. That works pretty good. We don't have a collider on them, so the player is jumping through. So that's one option that we change to make it work. Now, if we go to look at these objects, you can see that it's actually not working as the other objects. The character is always behind those objects, no matter if the Y position. And the reason behind that is if you select a tile map object right here, in the tile map render options, we have this mode right here and it's currently set to chunk. What that does, it just treats all of the tiles as just one image, which increases the performance, but it creates this issue for us of sorting. 
So we need to switch to individual instead. And as soon as we did, you might have noticed that this tile also fixed itself. So look at this tile right here. So if I click chunk, you can see that the tile that is in the back is actually visible through this object. And as soon as I click individual, it actually fixes that for us. So that is why I created a different tile map. So I can have this one set to individual mode. And the other one is in chunk because it's just a background. So we can just render it as one image. So let's click play now and see how the character works. You can see that there is an issue that we're still having. It works fine for a little bit, but then when we get too close, the character goes through the object. So the reason behind that is based on how we're deciding what is the Y position of this character. So let's select the bolt character. And in the sprite renderer for sprite sort point, it's currently set to center. So that means the center point of our character is what determines the Y position of the sorting. And we want to change it to pivot. Now the pivot position is actually at the bottom. And we did that when we're creating the character. So you can go and check that out. Go to the sprite editor and select one of these objects. And you can see that the pivot is actually at the bottom. So that is good. So let's click play and see how that's going to look now. So this character seems like is working correctly, but we didn't change the other one. So he's still going through. And there you go. That's how you set up the sorting of the sprites using the settings that Unity has available for us. That's pretty cool. Now we can add some more objects to our game. I went ahead and created another object palette with all of the objects that I wanted to add in the scene. You can add more if you want, but these are the ones that I just added. So right here I have wall tiles and then the structure tiles and some just random objects and rocks. So we can go ahead and create a scene using them. So let's create a wall. The wall is going to stop the players from getting outside our allowed area. So I just created a wall around this area that I want to create my scene in. And now you can place some of the objects just like you want them. This scene is probably not what I'm going to use in the game, but it's just a test scene that I can use to test the mechanics and stuff. So before I test, I'm going to actually turn off one of the characters so it'll be easier to control. And here's the character. And you can see that the collisions are working. I used grid collision instead of sprite collisions for the objects. So everything looks fine with those tiles. Now let's add some more objects into the game. But these objects, I'm not going to actually add to the tile map. And the reason for that is I want to create a custom collision shape for him. So I'll add just two sample objects, but you can add as much as you want. I'll just configure these. So these two, I also need to switch to multiple and 128 apply. And then I have to go through the spire editor and slice him because I want the sprite to just have the object itself. Same thing for the building and the center of the pivot. I need to also move it a little bit down somewhere in the same level as the corners of the building. So click apply. So now I can add a sample building and a sample craft. I'll move the character closer to those objects so I can easily test it. Let's try it out. And I need to switch this object to be center of pivot. So changed it to pivot. And there you go. That works much better. And now for the collision shapes, I can select it here and add a polygon collider. Go to edit mode of the collider and you can hold down control to remove any extra points that you don't need. And in my case, I just need four points. So all of these are going to be just extra. Get those points somewhere in the corner. And this one we're going to have to like guess based on our grid. So something like that. Same thing for this one. Polygon collider, edit and just remove all the extra points that we don't need. Roughly place them at the corners. And I think we're pretty good. Let's test it out. So there's my collider. That seems to work fine. And you can go ahead and add more of those buildings and crafts if you want into your game. But what I'll do is create prefabs out of this. So first, let me rename them. And if we go to prefabs, I already have more of the objects created here. Also, I have some of the rocks and the satellites as prefabs as well. If I want to place them in a random pattern and not in a grid pattern. So using those prefabs, we can just place some buildings. I'll just remove these ones because I spent more time configuring the other ones. So I can just place them in. And just like that, we have a test scene that we can walk around and test out the next mechanics that we're going to add. So like I mentioned, after this video, I'm going to start working on adding multiplayer into the game. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Make sure to click on the bell icon to turn on the notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.